just a quick overview of how phototherapy works. So unconjugated bilirubin absorbs the light most strongly in the blue region of the spectrum and the wavelength of light in this range is 460 nanometers. As you might remember, phototherapy was discovered by a serendipitous observation by one of the nurses in UK. She observed that the babies who were nursed near the window had lower levels of jaundice and she used to start keeping them out in the sun for a period of time. And uh, the white light phototherapy was the one that was introduced in the beginning and then they discovered the efficacy was more with blue light and the 460 nanometer was picked up. So there is direct relationship between efficacy of phototherapy and the irradiance used. There are three photochemical reactions, photo oxidation which plays a minor role. There is a disruption of the bilirubin molecule and it forms colorless polar fragments. These are easily excreted in the urine. And uh, configurational isomerization, this is a structural uh, change where it becomes water soluble and uh, this is the bulk and structural isomerization which is a uh, major role and the structural formation of glumirubin is irreversible, it contributes 6 to 10 percent while the rest of it is a reversible form. It's very interesting that the action of phototherapy starts within a few minutes uh, or even uh, about one hour there is a significant conversion of this uh, configurational isomerization. It's a very quick process. So uh, phototherapy starts acting immediately and even though this isomer may still be measurable in the serum, when you do the serum bilirubin, the actual uh, level comes down. Uh, the effect on the brain, the efficacy to crossing the blood-brain barrier drops. So the bilirubin toxicity drops soon after you start the phototherapy which is intensive. So the Radiance depends on the uh, radiance of the light, the distance from the unit and the other important factor is the surface area. So anything that increases the surface area like increasing the number of lamps, keeping a blanket underneath, having a lamp underneath the baby with a glass uh, shield, perspex shield, uh, having a drum phototherapy unit, all these are very effective ways. and. Uh, it's very important the unit has a policy to regularly monitor the effectiveness and maintain adequate hydration. So uh, these three important topics have been discussed and I will be discussing some of the recent updates on jaundice management in the coming couple of days. So there are a couple of questions. Uh, let me see Sudha. What is the reason for back bouncing of jaundice in newborn? So do you mean rebound increase in jaundice? So obviously if you think the jaundice is physiologic jaundice, we don't really need to wait for the rebound to happen. You would have an idea of whether it is physiologic jaundice or pathologic jaundice depending on how quickly the bilirubin drops. So basically as you know the balance of jaundice is where the bilirubin production and the bilirubin excretion is balanced. And um, if the baby has a hemolytic cause or any other reason why the bilirubin is rising rapidly, the rate of drop with the phototherapy will be relatively lower or you may not see a significant drop despite giving effective phototherapy. So if your bilirubin starts dropping quickly, it's very likely that it is responding well and the rate of production is not very high. The same parameter can be used in babies who have received phototherapy for a couple of days and then you see that the similar irradiance of uh, phototherapy or similar uh, exposure to phototherapy is dropping the bilirubin more. It means the liver is starting to mature, the production rate is dropping and both may happen in parallel or at different time frames. However, if you have pathologic jaundice, it's always better to observe the baby for a few hours after you stop phototherapy, recheck before you send home, mainly to avoid the hassle of uh, readmitting. In any case, you have to review the baby within one day or so of stopping the phototherapy, even if you discharge without waiting for the rebound. And if you mean the rebound happening after the exchange transfusion, it's because the uh, bilirubin redistributes after the exchange. So it's distributed in the various tissues. You are removing mainly the bilirubin which is bound in the albumin in the plasma. However, the ones that is in the tissue comes back uh, into the circulation. And uh, the same way the, isomer, uh, the isomers that are produced by phototherapy can uh, temporarily change back to the active form as well. So that is another reason. And there is another question from Pari. 
So, uh, what is the outcome of mild pathological jaundice in the phototherapy range on day 5 if we don't treat it with phototherapy? So basically, I mean, the phototherapy guidelines have been produced keeping in mind the risk and obviously you are already at day 4 or 5 and uh, in ABO incompatibility it may or may not be the ABO incompatibility that is contributing to this jaundice. So usually the hemolytic jaundice due to ABO would present uh, in the first uh, two to three days at least. So if it is going to day five for a significant jaundice, it's more likely the exaggerated physiologic jaundice. Whether the blood group difference is playing a role, we don't know. Because ABO incompatibility is one of the more difficult diagnoses because you may have a direct Coombs test positive at the same time baby may not hemolyze, baby may not have significant jaundice and you may not have a Coombs test positive at the same time the baby presents acutely with signs of hemolysis, a drop in hemoglobin and so on. So there are various factors and of course the uh, OB uh, setting is more severe than the OA setting in many situations and uh, sometimes you have the rarer blood group uh, differences overlapping on that as well. So uh, you can closely uh, monitor these babies if they are approaching the phototherapy range. You don't need to assume it's hemolysis. You can always do a hemoglobin to check and of course uh, I will be coming on to the importance of carbon monoxide as a measure of, uh, as a tool to see if there is hemolysis. Of course, most of us do not have access to that test, but it's one of the more recent advances of uh, uh, bilirubin treatment. So if you can closely monitor the child. Uh, you, if you have a transcutaneous bilirubin and you have the serum bilirubin at the first time, you can use that as a trend. You don't need to necessarily do a serum bilirubin every time. And if the trend in that baby is reliable, you monitor. If it's uh, showing a significant rise or it is not dropping well enough, I would suggest doing a uh, serum bilirubin uh, after two, three days uh, when you continue monitoring. The uh, impact of a borderline bilirubin on the brain is unknown. Most probably, uh, unless the baby is premature or baby has other risk factors like sepsis or asphyxia or a low albumin, a level of 22-23 uh, is not really going to harm the baby, but it is more a threshold where you don't want to exceed that, so you want to treat them before that. However, uh, if it crosses 25, uh, you would be worried. So the group that you are talking about is mainly the babies who are in the 17 to 20 milligram range, where it is approaching phototherapy range, but uh, baby is already day 5, maybe the breastfeeding has set in, you are starting to gain weight and uh, you may not uh, want to admit the baby and stress the parents. The cost also comes into uh, play in this situation. So you may decide to wait in these cases as well.